the question then comes, but why Amrit Vila? Why at the difficult time? Yeah? How do we all wake up in the morning? You wake up in the morning, alarm goes off if you set an alarm. Most of us, you get out of bed and you already have 10 things in your mind that you have to do. Yeah? That's natural. Because what you're doing is you're waking up at the last moment. Just before, you're just getting, squeezing in enough sleep just before you have to get up in order to fulfill all those duties. Whether that's getting kids ready, whether that's going to school, going to work, preparing the house, chores, doing work. You wake up just in time to do all those things. We all do that, yeah? What is Amrit Villa? Amrit Villa means spend a bit of time before your duties start. A bit of focused time before your duties start. Before your worldly duties start. Because you wake up in the morning, you're straight away connecting with all of your worldly duties. Guruji is saying, wake up before that time. Before the worldly duty starts, wake up then. So that you can actually spend some time in contemplation, in meditation. If, without the disturbance of all the things that you need to do. Yeah? That's the only time of the day that you have, which is yours. It's not dedicated to the things that you already have to do. You're not late for work or need to get ready or put the kettle on or whatever it is. You've got some time. And by doing that, what are you doing is you're saying to yourself, I'm prioritizing this in my life. If you've got to catch a flight, you wake up, right? Yes. Even if it's 3 o'clock in the morning, you're going to wake up because you've got to catch a 6 o'clock flight. 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, you're doing it. Why? Because mm. catching the flight is a priority. What you're doing every day here is you're <coughs> saying, I'm prioritizing this in my day. Yeah? This is a priority for me. This is something that I actually want. This is something that means something to me. Otherwise, we're going to carry on living our life, trying to wake up late, do all those things. And God's the last priority. Nam Simran is the last priority. When I get time, that's when I find I do some Simran. Guru Nanak Dev is saying, make some time before your day starts, rather than at the end of the day. Don't let Nam Simran be an afterthought. Make it the first thought. When you wake up in the morning, make that the first thing that you do. Make... Simran and Nam, your primary concern in life, because that's what we do. You wake up and all the concerns, all the things that you're worried about start to play in your mind. Gunana, if you're saying, well, make this the primary concern, and he's only offering a, a bit of advice. He's only offering, well, this is a very useful way to do it, because you've asked the question, how do I find God? If you really want to find God, prioritize God. Yeah, not Mr. God. The God that's within you. So that's why Amrit Vila. Yeah, before you wake up and think, start thinking about your family, work, food, whatever it is that you wake up and think about. <coughs> you're showing commitment to contemplating this thing and praising the divine before anything else. And the earlier that you wake up, the less worries you'll have in your in, on your mind. If you wake up 10 minutes before you actually have to get out of bed, you're probably already thinking about the things that you need to do. Yeah, you give yourself 5-10 minutes and okay, I'll give myself a bit of time. But if you woke up an hour before, then you actually, you'll see that I don't have to think about that until 6 o'clock. I don't even have to worry about that. Yeah? Like I've got a whole hour to myself that I don't even have to think about that. So you notice within yourself, the earlier you wake up, the less worries you'll have in your mind. So Guru Nanak Dev Ji offers to you this solution. Wake up early and try and prioritize this. If you want to sit and do Nam Simran, try. like when we come here, you do it at the end of the day, your work commitments are done. But probably even when you're sitting here, you probably got some commitments that you're thinking, oh, uh, did I leave the, the oven on? You know, it's like, there's always something in the back of your mind. When you wake up first thing in the morning, when there's nothing on your mind, 
because you've already gone to sleep having resolved all your affairs. Yeah, you've made your sure, you switch the oven off, you set the alarm, you do all the things that you need to do, right? So you've done all those. That's why you were able to go to sleep. Wake up early and still be in that mode of just tranquility. Amrit Vela Sachanam. In the early hours, try this. Meditate on this. And just think about the greatness of life. Appreciate life for what it is, not about what you want to get out of it. Yeah? Amrit Vela Sachanam. The true name, meditate on this on this name, which is anything, any word, just anything that allows you to, to focus on this. And Vadiai Vichar, contemplate the greatness of what you already have, not starting to think about what you need to do. And the second part to the answer, Karmi Ave Kapra Nadari Mokhdua. Karmi. Karam has two meanings. Karam can mean your actions, like we use the word Pichli Karam. But karam also has a different meaning, which means your grace, the grace, God's grace, divine grace. Here, karmi means grace. It doesn't mean your actions. Karmi ave kapra. Kapra means some sort of garment or a robe. By grace, you get given this robe. <coughs> what robe are we talking about? The robe of doing good actions. The robe of waking up in the morning. Some people also say that karmi ave kapra means kapra is talking about the body. That only by good fortune have you even had this opportunity to wake up in the morning because you've been given this understanding, you've been given this body, you've been given the ability to actually do this. But kapra means a robe, yeah? So either the, the robe of honor, like imagine the king analogy. The king analogy is kind of giving you some sort of robe of honor. Yeah? That doesn't come by your own. You don't just come in wearing the robe of honor. It's like the king grants it to you with his, with his grace. Karmi ave kapra. So with his grace, you get this opportunity to even do this. So notice how it takes the ego away. Guru Nanak Dev Ji does this time and time again. Wherever he offers you a solution, hang on, don't think that you're waking up Amrit Vela. It's his grace that you're waking up Amrit Vela. That's why even in Ardas we say Amrit Vele Jagan Vita. We ask, yeah, for just give us the opportunity to wake up in the morning so that we can remember you. Yeah, it's not by waking up three hours you can catch up on your, you know, Netflix or whatever. It's not waking up early to do other things. Wake up early so you can do this. But don't have an ego that says, look how early I wake up. What time do you wake up? You wake up 4 o'clock, I wake up 3 o'clock. <laughs> no. Guru Nanak Dev Ji, as soon as he gives you a solution, says, oh yeah, but it's not your doing. If you wake up early, it's not your doing. Karmi I wake up. And Nadari. Karmi and Nadari are the similar words. Karam means by his grace. Nadar means by his vision, by his glance. His Nadar. Yeah? We can say Nazar. Yeah, in today's language, we talk about somebody's giving me like negative vibes. <coughs> so it means positive or negative. Nadar. Nadri, by his grace, by his nadar, by him looking in your direction, only then you will achieve mok duar. Again, a brand new concept. Mok comes from Sanskrit word moksha. Which means mukti, liberation. <clears throat> By its grace, you receive the robe. Yeah. By its grace, the robe is received. By its glance, the mok duar. The duar means door. Darwaja. Mok means mukti. Mukti da darwaja. The door of liberation. It's like, well, hang on, I didn't ask for the door of liberation. Yeah, what did I ask for? I asked, how do I see this? Jit dise darbar. Jit son tare peyar. What's this door of liberation you're offering me now? 
new concepts coming in all the time, yeah? Qurbani is building upon these ideas now. And why only the door of liberation? Why not the whole, the whole thing? What am I going to do with the door of liberation? Why don't I get the whole thing? If liberation is like a palace, why do I get the door? Interesting ideas, no? So what's Guruji saying? By your grace, I obtain this vision. This vision allows me to give, give myself time to wake up in the morning. And by your grace, by your vision, I get the door of liberation. So what do we mean by that? What is liberation? What are we talking about? Traditionally, moksha means mukti from reincarnation. That's the traditional concept. Yeah? That you're here and you're going to be going into the circle of life and death, of birth and rebirth. And I think in Sanskrit they call it like samsara or something. There's, a, there's an idea of moving away, freeing yourself from this circle of yeah, Guru Nanak is here is not introducing the idea of, of reincarnation. He's not entertaining that idea just yet. He's just saying, if you're after mukti, this is the way to do it. It's not by your doing, it's by grace. And the door of liberation, liberation means free, freedom. Chukkara, you get free. So liberation is endless. Yeah, you can be shown the door to liberation, but once you walk through the door, liberation isn't something that you gain. Liberation is something that you dissolve into. You, by you being liberated, by you receiving mukti, means you you cease to exist. So you can be shown the door. Once you walk through that door, you disappear. So it's not something that you can obtain. You can't get mukti. You can fall into mukti. Yeah? Because if you're obtaining mukti, then you're saying, well, I'm still here, but I'm mukt. But no, but then who is mukt? Because you're still here. Yeah? Ego. Guru Nanak Dev Ji just can't stand the ego. Just keeps trying to knock you down and keeps trying to present your ego back to you. Because you could actually have people that says, I'm liberated, I've got mukti. It's a statement that just counteracts itself. Yeah. Mm. If I have mukti, then who is the I? Yeah. If there is an I, then you're not liberated. <coughs> yeah. So interesting ideas here. Mukdwar. You can't get mukti, but you can get the door of mukti. Once you walk through it, you're you're finished. You don't come back. Yeah. It's like the similar concept that says. If you understand, yeah, if you understand hukam, then you cease to exist. So the question, let's go back to the question. How do I do this? How do I see you? Guruji says, try Amrit Vela. Yeah, that's that's pretty solid advice, but it's not your doing. If you do Amrit Vela every morning, don't think it's you, it's grace. With his nadar, you, so you don't do it because if I wake up a hundred Amratvelas by the hundred and first one, I'll get my my lip, my mukti. Yeah, we're not counting. Like, am I going to get my mukti today? No. You're doing it out of pyar. You're doing it out of love. You're doing it because this is important to your life, not because there's an end goal. Because Actually, getting up and meditating is a nice thing to do. It's it's something that you get something out of. Contemplating and appreciating life and living. And remember, how, what was the opening line? Yeah? It's starting to live in this way that you just radiate this. The, you just become somebody where this is just a part of your life. This love for everything. This is how you will achieve that. Not by your... Ego saying, I wake up every morning and I'm doing it only to get to get the end goal. Otherwise, you're asking for something. That's what you need to focus on in the morning. Oh wow, I'm, I'm here for another day. Another breath. Another moment that I can remember you. Not, I'm doing it to ask for liberation. Because then, you're forgetting 
that you're getting already lots of gifts, you're asking for the next one. That's not how we do it. Nadri muktua. If you're going to get mukti, don't worry. Leave it up to up to the one. The one will decide whether you get mukti or not. That's not for you to worry about. That's not what your priority is. That's not the reason why you get a number three. It's taking mukti out of your desire. Yeah? Raj na chahu, mukt na chahu. I don't want to be a king. King analogy. I don't want mukti. Man preet charan kamalare. I want my mind to be in love with your lotus feet. That's all I want. Preet, love. Pakya pao apart. It's, I want to live a loving life. I'm just loving and in awe of your greatness all the time. That's what I'm asking for. Raj na chahu, mukt na chahu. Bani says, I don't want mukti. I want to be in love with you. So this love concept is really coming strong here. Yeah? Moho ke bolen bolie jitson tare pyaar. What can I say that I can feel your love? I just want to feel your love and I want to experience you. I want to see you. I can see everything else, but behind it, I know you're there, but I can't see you. Guru Nanak Dev says, wake up in the morning and spend your morning contemplating on this. This is you, God is you, everything is God. Then start your day. Start your day having already thought about it. You kind of think about what your priority in life is. My priority in life is I want to see you everywhere. If it happens, it's Karmi Aveka, Pranadri it's his grace. But that's not your focus. Your focus is I'm doing it because I love you. I'm, I want to be in a loving state. Not a dualistic love, not do jabhav. I want to be in a state of love all the time. I am in a state of love all the time. If God is in love, then I am in love. 